This is exactly right. Hi. Hi. And welcome to my favorite murder. The uh, apartment version. Yeah. God forbid we ever do one of these. <laughs> God, it's been so long, it feels like. I know. Doing like a regular episode. You know what I feel like we've discovered in um, touring this great nation of ours? Tell me. It's difficult to tour this great nation of ours and then come back and immediately start recording podcasts. <laughs> That's not an easy balance to strike. It isn't. It's a huge difference. I think I'm more used to live shows now than I am to this, sitting on my couch, talking to each other. Yeah. And it's also, uh, we have to do a bunch of work to do those live shows. And then when we come back, we have to do a bunch of work Mm -hmm. to do this version of the show. Yeah. Complain, complain, complain. I mean, you just got to wonder, you know. It's so true. You just have to wonder. That's such a good point. And wait. And look and learn. And look, learn, listen. And wa- and again, wonder at the end. And then at the end of the day, you're just left wondering. You are you bookend the day yeah. wondering and wondering. Yeah. But hopefully with like a childlike sense of wonder. Yeah, I think that's... And definitely while you watch The Wonder Years. <laughs> I think that's important. <laughs> definitely. You have to do that. You have have to have Kevin Arnold narrating your life. Please. Did I ever brag to you about the time that um, Fred Savage directed <gasps> the, a TV show I was working on? No. And he, I was so starstruck by him. And because he is Kevin Arnold, no. it's just like, that's who that person is. But he will always be. And he looks, ex- it's like, it's a grown up Kevin Arnold. It's not an actor who's like, oh yeah, it's fucking. It's not a version of Kevin Arnold. It's Kevin Arnold. And he sounds exactly he? the same. And he looks the same. Yeah. And he couldn't be a nicer, Ugh. more talented and more professional person. So he's the kind of person, and this is very rare in Hollywood, where if he's talking to somebody else and you're standing there, he'll turn and include you in the conversation oh. which the first time he did that because it was the on uh two broke girls and i was working with pat walsh mm-hmm. so he and pat walsh are good friends mm-hmm. so i have you standing there so then he just like turned and it was like the bright shining light of Kevin arnold was suddenly oh. on, coming back my way mm. it was very upsetting and i think <laughs> i just made a face and walked away <laughs> Because it was like, I didn't realize how yeah. starstruck I would be. Yeah, It didn't, uh, There's, anyway. I would have been too. I would be. I will be. I'm going to be positive. When I meet him one day. Yeah. And I, w- and I would and I will. And you would and you will. And I bet you he's used to it because it's one of those things of like, there's a, there's a generation of people yeah. that he talked directly to totally. like once a week. Totally. It's fucking Good times. crazy shit. This is the wonderment we're talking about. Yes, exactly. I finished Mindhunter today. Ooh. Finally, and what's your end opinion? My end, my end game is that I just want it to be a show about the guy who plays Ed Kemper. I just want to watch Ed Kemper, the Ed Kemper character, live, yes. live and love in prison. <laughs> I just well, it love would the, be an amazing show. I just love that guy. The guy who plays him is fucking pitch perfect. What if he weren't pitch perfect? Four is there a four yet? What if he can sing a cappella? Oh my god! Group ensemble bullshit goes so back to well. college. He's like, I'm going back to college. Yes, I want to kill all the women around. Yes, me, but listen to my angelic voice. Maybe he starts an a cappella thing in prison. Yes. Brings everyone together. And that's how he begins to compete in the pitch perfect universe. Yes. And that's how he begins to heal from and being that's... a fucking psychopathic murderer <laughs> piece of shit. And he finally proves wrong all of the theories that you cannot cure a psychopath. Right. Because you actually can cure a psychopath with a cappella singing. That's all it takes. If you, if you can, without any music, with your friends, uh-huh. sing boys to men, mm-hmm. well. Oh my God. You're you're cured. You're a human. There's hope for all of us. All of us psychopaths. (laughs) So then three stars, five stars. Oh, I just, you know, you know me. I'm such a I'm such a complainer. I I liked so much about it. I liked a lot about it. Four stars, three and a half stars, four stars. Okay. Ah. What's how many out of how many? (laughs) Twelve? No, an infinite. (laughs) <laughs> so it could be three shit we don't know but four out of infinite is still very low yeah 
I don't know. Yeah. I'd like to remind you of the wall that had a rainbow painted on it in an apartment that was just presented as like, here's an apartment and this is how it's decorated. When? When the uh, Dr. Wendy, what's her name, mm-hmm. was getting in a new apartment and kind of like oh. starting her new life. And they, the real estate agent was like walking around that apartment. They walk into a room and there's just a like <laughs> really gross colored, yeah. four colored rainbow I painted on the apartment. wall. That was like a Z. Yeah. I stopped and took a picture <laughs> of that screen with my phone. Oh my God. So good. It's so good. Um, I also want to say that the new season of Someone Knows Something came out this week. That's right. And they fucking just threw them all up at once which is like fun because then you're like you can binge goodbye the forever i'm gonna listen to it and it's a i started listening it's really good of course and it's about um two black teenagers in 1964 who were killed by the ku klux klan in mississippi and he's fucking going back to investigate it holy shit which is bananas and insane and so important and like fucking kudos to, to people to podcasts like someone knows something and the fall line who are doing important important work yes unfortunately still fucking relevant to shit yeah, hell yeah you know? maybe more so yeah well also those guys i mean i actually don't know about the women who do fall line but the guy from someone knows something is a legit journalist yeah right? he's, yeah he's a that's kind of what he does right so don't feel too bad oh that i oh i know i have no I know that I have nothing. I can't come near that rainbow and touch, I mean, touch it with my do anything important. You could if you painted on your wall in a Z pattern. In a zigzag. <laughs> Can we talk about that someone from when we were in Florida last weekend doing our live shows where there was also an active serial killer while, yes. we, were, while we were there? Um, someone gave us a game, a board game of Guess Who, the game made into serial killers form. And it is fucking so cool. I want to cry. Yeah. It's on our Instagram. I've never actually seen anything but the side of this game because the second this girl pulled out this game, <laughs> Georgia clasped onto it and never let it go. I, I didn't even ask. I Karen. feel at one point I was like, hey, we should play. And you're like, uh uh-huh, nah, nah. Like it was just like your baby. But I have to say, I'm too old for that. I've never oh, played that game. I've, but you've probably played it with like niece or nephew or whatever. Uh, I, I've never no. played that okay. game. Well, we're going to play it and you're going to love it. I uh, can't wait to play it. Go to I my, mean, I know about it. Yeah. Go to my favorite murder Instagram to see photos of it. It's all the like characters that it's like, does your character ha- wear glasses? Does your character eat the flesh of his victims? <laughs> like, it's just this <laughs> flip, flip, flip. flip. Yeah. yeah. It's ha- always Albert the, Fish. The Papan sisters are in there. Ugh. So, you know, it's just like, is your character a, a murdery clown? No, <laughs> put him down. It's just the best. It's so good. And, and, and it clearly, this girl put in so much work. Yeah. It's it just, great. and it's clever. And so I think that we should play one game before every time we record from now on. Okay. Isn't that a great, I just thought of that. That's great. And then we'll keep a running tally. Yeah. Uh, and then at the end, whoever wins the most games gets $50,000. <laughs> At the end of what? At the end of this podcast <laughs> run. That just got real sad. <laughs> At when? the end of our lives. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, and it went on forever, and they just wouldn't stop talking about it. I mean, they just kept talking about yeah. it. Um, I would like to say this. We, uh, I believe it was last week, put up our ringtone. Oh, yeah. And it, um, I think Stephen immediately was number one. Yeah, it was somebody on the on the Facebook posted it originally and was like, within 24 hours was number one. It was number one on the iTunes ringtone chart, which is fucking right. hilarious. No, and also Billboard. Did I tell you? Billboard Awards. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't even know that was a thing. What? <laughs> what else would it be number one on? I don't know. <laughs> um, but I was just going to say, and then immediately there was a copycat, yeah. like marimba version, right? So I text, we're in Florida, and I text Stephen. I'm like, hey, what is that? Did you do that, Stephen? <laughs> but of course, you always forget that through a text, it doesn't sound like that. Right. And so it probably oh. sounded like, did you do this? Stephen, did you do this? And Stephen was like, it is not me. <laughs> and then I got really sad where I'm like, that was not a funny joke. But 
Um, because Stephen has written his own version of mm-hmm. our, we already have somebody to do versions of our yeah. theme song. We don't need other strangers who are doing, or just basically do that to all. It's probably a robot who's working for the fucking r- Russian government, yes. man. Listen, I'm going to get deep into conspiracy right now. And do there's it. fucking stealing podcast songs written by Karen in the 20 minutes on her fucking acoustic guitar. This stealing is it. Putin at his worst. Putin. So... What we would like, so Stephen's going to put, people have actually tweeted about this and asked a, a, a lot about it. When is Stephen going to post his versions? So we were like, Stephen, you now need to post your version so that if anybody's, if anybody isn't into the Ridge yeah. and they're like, hey, what about, what about some salsa yeah. aspect or whatever? Is there a salsa? I'm not sure. Can I get one that's influenced by the music of Selena? <laughs> yeah, well, yes, you can. Actually, yes, you can. And yes, you can. It's written by one Stephen. Ray. William. <laughs> Ray. Did you not? know about his confirmation name <laughs> the one you just made up yeah. <laughs> so steven's gonna post his yeah what? say it uh yeah i'm gonna post mine the bossa nova one because the people have been asking about yeah, yeah. The bossa nova one's legit you can listen you can download them they, they can be a ringtone for like your grandma or they can be your alarm clock ring in the morning the bossa nova that's you're exactly right if you are ashamed to have a kind of like a bizarre pseudo country murder ballad Mm -hmm. you can do a version of it that's just gonna sound like just some fun interstitial marimba music or whatever i just keep changing the style (laughs) i mean the marimba one would be good too Uh, do you have that too uh well no i think the bootleg was copying that because oh. it used the marimba, which I used in the Boston. Fuck, <gasps> Fuck you, Putin. Somebody, Putin went after Steven's ass. Putin went after Steven, not us. Yeah, guys. that's right. So get mad that, at it. I think that made us even angrier. Yeah. Because you don't go after Steven. Yeah, we can fight. We can I fight do. dirty. Yeah. I get to. Yes. But Russians don't get no, no, to. No, 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 um, no. So anyway, if you want that, when are you going to do it, Steven? And when's it going to be up? Uh, hopefully maybe it won't I don't know if it'll be up by this weekend December, great so this weekend yeah soon so hold out if you want a version hold out for Steven's version please don't support the weird ripoff version no and you'll That's be able so to weird no it's so weird but they don't know people don't know people don't know I don't know everyone's Whatever. trying to make a buck tell me about it right hey, speaking of we have tickets left for our kansas city show <laughs> nice transition thank you that it, it's a kansas city late show on december 9th it's a saturday Hey, Kansas City, if you feel like coming, come. We'll see you there. Yeah, was that... uh, Did we add a second show? Yeah, we added a second, a late show. Okay. All right. So So they're still available if you want to... Say you want to drive in from Minneapolis. (laughs) You know, maybe you're free that weekend. (laughs) I don't know. Karen's offering options. Give them a brunch option for Sunday morning, Karen. If, say, for example, you come in for the late show, Mm -hmm. you're totally free to stay for brunch the next day in, in that city. Have a nice brunch. God, that'd be nice for you. You <laughs> love coffee. You love orange juice. You always talk about coffee and orange juice. It's an excuse to eat a Monte Cristo sandwich. Yes. Which my mom would always be like, oh, well, we are at brunch. I'm going to get a Monte Cristo, <laughs> which is a uh, full on deep fried ham s- sandwich with jelly in it. And powdered sugar on top. And powder. It's like eating French toast, ham and like toast with jelly all at the same time. Stop. Don't eat them separately. Yeah, and privately. <laughs> Very Monte Cristo is a private sandwich. That's that's for the dark. <laughs> that's for the dark. Mm-hmm. Um, have you watched anything lately? Because I got one. Tell me, Alias Grace. No, the Dude. Margaret Atwood one. What's that? The Margaret Atwood situation. Yes. yes. I no, I watched it. It's a great. I loved it. I did that thing though where I was binge watching it, so I would follow. I would fall asleep oh. and then have weird alias Grace dreams and then be like, was that the episode yeah. or was I sleeping? <laughs> was there a giant frog yeah. in it? I don't know. There And you won't either because no spoiler alerts, but um, <laughs> I mean spoilers, but I loved it. I thought it was super fascinating and it's really well made. Um, yeah, okay. I recommend. Okay. I have one thing that I've been watching, but I'm going to save it for my thing that I love at the end of the show. Okay. Because it's different. It's weird. Perhaps I should have done the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, save it. Save that. Save it. Cut it. Okay. Um, is that everything? I think so. Any corrections corner? Oh, I have a correction corner. Then that fact that um, people got upset with me that I said that putting your animal on Prozac was very LA. I like Hollywood. And they're like, I live in fucking 
I don't know, Florida and my cat's on Prozac. Like people were specifically telling me that, that you know, which I appreciate. Do you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like No, it. I don't. But well, I get, but I get it. There was a couple people in the VIP when we were in Florida. Thank you, by the way. I have to say, we had the best time in Florida. Yeah, we had a Tampa, time. Orlando, Fort Lauderdale. And everyone there was like, thanks for coming to Florida. <laughs> like we were doing everybody a big favor. And we had, the shows were amazing. So much fun. Audiences were amazing. Yeah. So good. We had the best time. And uh, you guys get, you guys get a bum rap. What with all the like people eating each other's faces. Well, the murder, um, which is what we came for. Yes. So we were, ple- we were not, ple- we were not surprised. Now who goes first? Uh, I went First, I went first in, in Fort, Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale, right? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. That's you then. It is. Here's the, here's the um, exciting surprise. I'm not sure if I've ever, if I've done this before. <laughs> what? Yeah. How? I mean. Okay. Well, it'll be, a, if you don't know, then I won't know. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've texted Steven and been like, sorry, is this? Like, uh, it goes from like, is Georgia doing this one when we're on the road? Yeah. To then like, have we ever done this one? Well, I'd, I've done that before. I had to look it up because you just see the same name so many times over and over, and you have to like look for details to remember which fucking piece of shit was the murderer that you're ta- like looking for. At this also, moment. we talk about things sometimes yeah. without doing them, yeah. which is what I think I'm remembering on this one. Yeah, but I could be wrong. Um, I'm excited. Let's just you let just tell me. Let's do this. It's the bloody benders. Which ones are they? Tell me. Why don't you tell me? Okay. Okay. Well, then that's a very good sign. Yeah. Thank well, you. no, it's not because I have a terrible memory. Oh, fuck. Okay, go. <laughs> that's the most disappointed sigh. <laughs> <sighs> I wish I could be doing better right now, but I'm almost positive I haven't. I just know that there's a really good dollop about it that I've heard. Uh-huh. I have also that thing where all of my memories are starting to just bleed into each other where it's like, did I do the podcast myself or did I hear the dollop right. do it? Like, right. am I, I don't, I, that name sounds familiar, but I don't think we've done it. All right. I'll tell you about it. Tell me about it then. Let me tell you a little bit about How it. How about? Um, and I actually, at one point today, cause I had part of it done. I called my sister cause she wasn't doing anything. I'm like, can you please find me some articles that I can read oh like God. in the midst? So this was a real, um, this was a real 11th hour, super special one. Um, uh, but one, the main spot that I got, like, to me, the best information, it was from an article on a website called Ranker, which I don't think we talk about that much. I love Ranker I fucking love so Ranker. Much. It is, every time there's a Ranker link, that article will give me the biggest, best chunk of information. Yep. It's I, so good. I, I, that's my late at night reading like 15 EMTs tell you their most gruesome fucking thing that ever happened to them or yeah. like it's just that it was crazy lists yeah and they That's have amazing. endless yeah true crime shit and endless. serial killer shit yeah endless and there's so the woman that wrote this article is named Kat McAuliffe and I'm positive that I've read her stuff on either also on Ranker or on other websites mm-hmm. too so she wrote um, a couple of these articles about the bloody benders so um, so thank you Kat McAuliffe for the, all the work you do enabling me to do much much less work <laughs> okay so in 1870 a family of German immigrant homesteaders named the Benders, made their way by wagon to Labette County, Kansas, and settled on a 160-acre farm located directly, directly like, on the Osage Trail. 100%. You've never done this. Really? 100%. Okay, thank God. Because this is one of my favorites, and I've wanted to do it for a long time. And I don't know why I haven't. I guess I just, just never, I lost, I lost track of it. We lost track after college. Um... <laughs> Okay, good. That makes me happy. So, first the men went out. So, it was John Sr. and the son, John Jr., they went and they built a barn, they built a cabin, they dug a well. And then um, the mother, Elvira, who was also known as Kate, and then Pick the one. sister, named K- daughter, named Kate. Okay. Elvira <laughs> like Kate or Kate. Kate Jr. Kate Jr. Kate Jr. Kate and Kate Jr. Elvira or Kate Sr. Yeah. They're very similar. Um, they arrived in 1871. And um, 
they bought livestock. They had like a farm. There was an orchard that was on the property. And so basically they, um, the cabin that they built was pretty big. So it became the Bender Inn. And so the front of the cabin was a general store and like, uh, the inn, and then it was divided by the canvas that they put over their covered wagon. Mm -hmm. They took it off their covered wagon and then they put it up, um, to serve as the divider between their private, um, rooms and then the store and the rustic, and, you know, you can see that on HGTV now. <laughs> I'd love to pull down this canvas and just open up the space <laughs> so we could see right into the orchard. Yeah. See the lice uh, canvas? Can we get that down? The smallpox yeah. canvas? Uh, could we cut some circular holes? I think circular would be an amazing yes. shape to see in this canvas. Absolutely. Um, and then, of course, the lice. <laughs> It'd be lovely to see the lice. I'd love to see the lice backlit yes. so that I can see the patterns that they're mm. making in the canvas. Beautiful. Okay, so they all basically, they're pitching and they're like, we're going to have this place and it's this stopover. So at the time, of course, there were, it's, you know, it's the late, mid to late 19th century America. So there's all these... They're moving Native Trails. American tribes yeah. and they're telling people you can come settle here right. and then you can also on your way, you can go out to the West. Yeah. Hey, we own this, this piece of land now, everyone. Exactly. Americans. Go get your thing. I'm sure there's all kinds of details that people who care about history. <laughs> no, I think go get your thing. Go get your thing is sums it up. Pretty right? much. Exactly. Go get your thing, said a man in charge. And yeah. everyone went, thank you. Yep. So that's they got their thing. thing. Yeah. They were like, I fought in the Civil War. Fuck this shit. Yeah. I'm out of here. I want to go to California. I want to get my own thing. Surf and smoke weed. Yep. So the Osage Trail was one of the ways people went out to West, went out West. And so the Benders saw that that was an opportunity. They could build this spot and have this. I keep calling it a stopover. There's a better word for it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. But basically, they could get provisions there and spend the night or just get their stuff and go. But it would be like the central spot. Also, the daughter, Kate, claimed to be a psychic and a spiritualist mm -hmm. who could talk with the dead. Mm -hmm. So the locals that became a word of mouth thing were then the locals were also coming there just to, you know, Tell their grandfather yeah. they love them and stuff like right, that. Right, or ask where they hid the key to the... <laughs> to the safe. To the horse. Yes. <laughs> the horse won't start. Please. <laughs> ask your father. Um, and I was, like, thinking, why would people travel to go get, like, their palm read or whatever? And it's like, because there's no TV. There's, there's nothing. Nothing to do but fuck and get your palm read. And then read that old Bible yeah. someone brought in their wagon with them. Yeah, yeah. And also stare at the lice canvas. <laughs> so this this place kind of be, became a place to be. Okay. Um, I think of it as the Wendy's on the five. <gasps> yeah. That's by the Split P. Andersons. That also ha is attached to a like convenience store yep. gas station and has a subway. Exactly. Too. So if you don't want to do fast food, right. some people in the car don't want to eat fast food. Right. Ever. Ugh. Ugh. But hey, everyone's got... Then also, if you need gummy bears, it's yeah. there. Yeah. They're all there. Yeah. Well, the Benders started that. Okay. So let's attribute it to okay. that. Okay. It was their thing. That was kind of their jam. Okay. Um, so... Uh, they, okay, I said they all work there, right? Yeah. Okay. I said I actually wrote the sentence. This was the time of great expansion. What the fuck? <laughs> what am I even talking about? I don't know if that's true or not. I know nothing about it. It probably was. I mean, I think it was generally. Listen, but our country, our great nation was growing. It's the Oregon Trail was happening. The video game, the Oregon Trail was happening <laughs> at the time. People Kids were, were playing the Oregon Trail in libraries yes. across the nation. Um, dysentery everywhere, <laughs> you know. Don't forget the Donner Party was in there somewhere. Right. Go in and get your jelly beans. Go. This to is the, your time. To the, yeah. Sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla. The end. Goodbye. Um, uh, de dude. Oh, so the thing about this, obviously, here's what I do know for a fact. Okay, tell me. That a lot of, there was obviously tons of immigrants in America. 
as we do. So a lot of these travelers had already come off a boat. They'd already been traveling mm-hmm. and they were like, we got to go get that big chunk of land. The government said we could have mm-hmm. or, or however they were going to do it. And they were basically like, get in there and get through. So they didn't have, you know, maybe they had their immediate family, but that was it. Mm-hmm. So if people were traveling, a lot, they weren't expected back anywhere. Mm-hmm. No one was like, whoa, you didn't hit your mark. You didn't, you said you were coming on the 28th. Yeah. And how would you even know? You'd call Western Union. Exactly. There you, go. you send a letter and seven months later, yeah. it somehow finds someone. Right. So the, this helped the benders because the benders were not what they seemed to be. <gasps> were they bloody? They were the bloody, bloody benders. Okay. It might just be one bloody, but. Um, well, now it's two. I love to goose it. So, um, when people stopped along the way, they tended to disappear when they stayed at the Bender Inn. And a lot of people didn't notice because there were just these people that were passing through. Yeah. But, uh, someone did, uh, notice when a man named George Lanchet, I'm going to pronounce it French, but that it could be launcher, <laughs> but I'm going to say George Lanchet and his infant daughter stopped at the Bender Inn. Um, they were on their way to Ohio. They were from Kansas and they never returned home. And their neighbor, Dr. Henry, William Henry York was a prominent doctor. And he immediately noticed when they didn't come back, when George said he was coming back Mm -hmm. and he set out to go find them. Um, but he did the brilliant thing that you always do before you're about to go do something, especially by yourself. You tell a bunch of fucking people right. what you're doing and where you're going and why. Yeah. You communicate. So Dr. William Henry York was a prominent doctor. He had a brother uh, who was a colonel, Colonel Ed York, and his other brother, Alexander York, was a senator. Oh, shit. So he informed the superstar York brothers. <laughs> he was like, hey, I'm going to try to go find my neighbor. Something weird has happened. Yeah. that he didn't come back. Um, so then when Dr. William Henry York didn't come back, mm-hmm. the Superstar Brothers were like, something really weird's happening. Mm-hmm. So the Colonel, Ed York, got a, a posse of 50 soldiers to come with him. And they just started searching every single homestead mm-hmm. along the Osage Trail. Because mm-hmm. they were like, this is fucked. Yeah. And um, when they got to the Bender Inn, it was March 28th, 1873. And um, the colonel explained to the Benders that he was looking for his brother. And the uh, Benders told him, yes, his brother did stay there, but then he left. And there's a, probably a good chance that he had a run in with some of the Native Americans mm-hmm. nearby. And they so the colonel left they continued searching on but as they asked more people around they started hearing these stories of fucked up shit that was happening to people at the benders Mm -hmm. so there was a woman that told them a story of getting chased out of the bender in with knives oh my god and then upon hearing that he was like we're going back there right so they go back and um they have another conversation with them if you i highly recommend listening to um the the dollop because dave did so much fucking research yeah it's so hilarious and the there's a whole standoff that happens when they go back when oh they go God. back to recheck because the first pass is like oh it's just this nice family yeah you would never think twice about you know the son the daughter everyone's so sweet and kind when they go back it's the the vibe is a little bit different really? and the colonel knows he can't just arrest them he has to have proof he has to have a warrant to search the house whatever so he's like yeah i'm gonna be back well they go to get that warrant and when they come back the benders are gone <gasps> The whole cabin is empty. And when they go into the house, the cabin, to search it, they first notice there's absolutely nothing inside. Then the smell hits them. No. And it is a smell that's so bad. And they they finally realize it's coming from this trap door. Oh, dear. And it's so bad, they open the (gasps) trap door and no one can stay inside the cabin. Oh, my God. They end up having to take the cabin off its foundation so (gasps) they can look in the cellar. Oh, my God. Because no one could do it. And when they see into the cellar there the cellar floor is covered in congealed blood ew i bet it's so hot out in the middle of there too right probably ew so gross so then they know something bad has been mm-hmm. happening and they're like everyone's freaking out but there's no bodies there's no body parts or anything it's just down there. congealed blood it's just congealed blood Ugh. so they're like holy shit yeah 
So the colonel goes up and now I'm going to, now I'm going to just tell a little white lie because this is how it pictured in my mind. Okay. But okay. I do not, I don't even think there's very many hills in Kansas. No, so it's probably not who cares? how I picture it. But he basically went and got like a bird's eye view somehow of the land. Mm -hmm. So either he went up on a little hill is how I like to picture it mm -hmm. and like look down on it. Or he just kind of got, got back a bit and he noticed drone. He got a drone. He got a <laughs> Send a drone out. He got a drone, which was just a hawk. <laughs> um, and he noticed that there were depressions in the apple orchard soil. Oh, dear. Right? Mm -hmm. I thought of your pig people. Dude, my pig people. No um, stone unturned. That's one of the ways that they find clandestine graves is those and they say there's only certain times of day when you can tell where the shadow's going if there's a depression in this in the soil crazy like if you look at it at sunset you can see that the shadows are fucked up and there's a depression yeah it's really yeah cool. yeah no i love it exactly. i was that's all i thought of when i got to that part yeah. where i'm like i wonder if either he had so much experience being a colonel right that he had seen stuff like that before yeah. or if it just it like hit him of like that's not right right either way they took metal rods and they started poking the <gasps> earth in the orchard it's stinky and there was some obviously there was some ground that was hard and solid and right. then they would come upon really soft ground oh my god so the first time they did that they started digging and almost immediately they found the body of dr william york oh he was barely he was barely down in the ground wow all. so they uncover him and then they start uncovering other bodies holy shit and they end up finding eight buried bodies in the orchard alone wow but some of the um, graves are so deep that they, 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 they like that. They're like, they're realizing, Oh, there could be tons of people <gasps> buried out here and we just wouldn't know it mm -hmm. because they could have buried 10 people in one grave this deep. They also found, um, a father and daughter in a single grave and there was no, uh, injuries on the girl except for she had a broken arm but other than that nothing and they think they oh, buried her alive no. and put the dead body of her father on no, top of her no 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 yeah just to just to really um no <laughs> just to really bum you out uh so um let's see so based on the injuries of the dead bodies that they dug up, mm -hmm. they put together the story of what they figured the benders were doing. Okay. So they would have somebody that would be check into the inn. Mm -hmm. And then that night it would, they would come to dinner at the dinner table mm -hmm. and they would always seat that person at the head of the table with their back, the guests back to the canvas mm. divider. Oh my God. The canvas that looks so pretty. The gorgeous lice canvas. Oh no. So at some point, um, and I like to picture that they get them nice and drunk. So they're sure. having a real good time. What do they have? Mead? What do they drink back then? Back then I would say it's some kind of a beer, right? Yeah. Blood cellar beer. Yeah. Be oh. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Um, <laughs> so at some point in the dinner, either John senior or John junior, mm -hmm. not, not Elvira, not, not Elvira, Vira senior or Kate junior. <laughs> Goes behind the canvas and hits them in the head with a hammer. Oh, ow. Knocks them out. Uh -huh. And then Kate slits their throat the little with a girl knife. or the mom? The girl. Kate Jr. Why does she do it? She, that was her jam? No. I'm not sure why they think she did it. Maybe, I mean, maybe it was something about the mother that she couldn't do it or whatever. Or like she was a strong mm -hmm. one. But then they had this trap door. So they would just drop the dead body down the trap door into the cellar. Link. And so that that was all gone and away. And so oh, that basically they could do that and get away with it. And there could be people in the general store. <laughs> there could be people in the inn. And they could like just get rid of these people. And then they would rob them. And they would get, you know, a lot of these people had stuck all their stuff in their covered wagon yeah. and it had everything that they owned Fuck. and had tons of money on them and tons of valuables on them and the benders just took it all but they also noted that there were some people that they only got a dollar off of or ten dollars so they said this was actually like a serial killing family because sometimes they just did it to do it wow yeah because it wouldn't be it wouldn't even make sense to kill a person yeah. who just had four bucks in their pocket it yeah. was like 
it would actually draw attention and not be the best idea, but they right. did it anyway. So fuckers, right? At the time, Senator York, the other fancy brother, mm-hmm. offered a one thousand dollar reward for the bender's arrest, which is the equivalent today of twenty thousand dollars. Holy shit! And then the governor of Kansas put up a two thousand dollar reward, so oh forty god. grand. Oh my god! Um, but despite all the reward money, the benders were never caught. They were never seen again. What? They they were they have they went they disappeared. No. Yes. Now there's all kinds of people who said they saw them places that gave weird information. There were people who confessed to being the benders. Um it was, you know, it was like a huge story, but they themselves were never found. Um, Jesus. There was a story that there was a boat in Mexico that uh, was out at sea in the Gulf of Mexico and a balloon, a hot air balloon crashed onto the deck of the boat. What the fuck? And the benders were inside and, uh, and Elvira, John Sr. and Kate all died in the crash. John Jr. survived and did a deathbed confession of we're the benders. We killed all these people. My father made or whoever he was the John senior was a bol- hot air balloon maker in Germany. And he's been making this hot air balloon for our escape. And that's <laughs> like, that's how he got no, there. I, I, no, 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 no. You lost me about, about, what no not that, that balloon perfectly landed crash landed onto the bow of a boat onto three murderous <laughs> members of a family <laughs> it's like i think i think that's how wizard of oz started it is it's they shut up they took well that's from the wizard of oz i mean there wow. is that part wow. remember there were men in my town no oh no he's Remember, he's going to leave. It's the oh, end. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. He's going to leave. And then she's like, I'm not going with you. And, <laughs> and like, when, and then tap your shoes together. And, and tap your shoes. Uh, and then there's no kill, place like home, kill travelers. Blah, blah, blah. Um, wow. <laughs> and then kill travelers. Anyway, that's, that's just like a story somebody yeah. had, which is kind of genius. But ultimately, they're, what they ended up finding out after all of it, there were no official papers that proved that they were actually a family. Mm. So what it is believed is that Elvira, AKA Kate senior and Kate junior were mother and daughter. Mm -hmm. John senior was not related to anybody by blood. John junior was not related to anybody by blood. And they think actually Kate junior and John junior were husband and wife common law. Oh, and that they were all, they were basically a gang of thugs that got together, that got together. And we're like, if we pretend we're a family, people will trust totally. us. Totally, We can't just be four randos that are sitting in a cabin going like, <laughs> come and buy oats from us. Yeah. But if we're like, come to the Bender family in, yeah. people would be like, Oh, thank God. Yeah. Biscuits and a good conversation with the benders. Right. And so they, that it was like a scam from, <gasps> from the setup. Where do you think they went? You know, what's so cool is that someone listening, I bet right now is related to the benders. Yes. And knows m- way more good stuff or doesn't know anything. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> just like slowly think. realizing. Yeah. Or like someone and they'll never know. It's like someone's great, great, great. Not that great, great, great aunt is elvira yes or great grandparents are john and kate who just were like plus eight plus eight (laughs) they went and had eight kids all at once in indiana yeah uh let's see i think that oh the other rumor was that elvira um elvira had as many as five husbands before Mm. the bender in it, it, you know, event, mm-hmm. and all of them died by blunt force trauma to the head. But that is hot goss, and I think also unproven. But that was just basically like they, you know, people try. You to put love it a black widow. I love a black. You widow. love a, a vintage black widow. There's something so. It's almost like women were so oppressed that yeah. some women busted out in a way that, j- like, they just went batshit crazy. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, you're going to oppress me. Watch how I kill everybody. Yeah. And, and get away with it in that way of like, she's so sweet. She's no one so ever nice. expect, uh, expected. I, no yeah. one ever suspected. Suspected. <laughs> Suspect. Or expected. You know, it's a true crime podcast. <laughs> and I don't know the word to suspect. <laughs> 
<laughs> all in all, the bloody benders were believed to have killed at least a dozen people, possibly over 20. Oh my God. Yeah. And that is it. What if, okay. What? What if H.H. H. Holmes, I feel like H.H. H. Holmes must be involved in this somewhere. He was friends with them. He knew them. Yes. It's a similar thing. They have it. They have an inn. They have a place where people come and stay. Yes. What if, I don't know if the timeline matches up. I think it does this because this is about 10 years before H.H. So H. Holmes. H.H. H. H. Holmes is John Jr. Yes, he is. <laughs> and <laughs> we he solved got a it. taste for it. <laughs> we solved it. He was like. He was watching Kate slit the throats. He was, you know, he was hitting the back of the head, but on the other side of the canvas, he's mm-hmm. like, I got to get more of a first person. Yeah. This you know. is fun, but I'd like to do something a little crazier and a little nicer. I think cabins are lit. This is trashy. Yeah. Let's do a hotel. Um, oh, also they call, they, people took the cabin apart by hand. Uh huh. Um, and I think they, they think kept, kept it for uh you know do we know where it is can we visit it can we spend the night there? yes it's now called hell's acre oh and they can we s- camp on the ground i don't <gasps> think so because they say it's haunted no that, that you could still do it though well but it's <laughs> Even like if they say it's, it's totally haunted. cleared they think there's bodies out there that they don't know more <gasps> about and they've like ghost shows have gone there well we're we're going for a live show a right. live show to right. have it in to put on a live show in the center of hell's acre uh-huh well, great. <laughs> I'll see you. I'll see you after. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's them, dude. That's great. I know. I never. I you didn't? didn't know that. Thank fucking god. No. What a night. I, that's why I was like, oh, I. I wish I knew this for a fact. But like these days, when I'm eighty percent sure of something, it drop immediately drops to thirty yeah. percent sure. Yeah. I just kind of don't know anything anymore. <laughs> so you know that we have. Um, someone made us a Wikipedia. And I think it lists each episode. Is that true, Steven? It's shaking his head, yes. He knows. It, it's they list every episode and what each what so you can control F and put in Bender. Did it come up? No? Then you've never done the goddamn Well benders. hell yeah. I know I had to do it because I was like, have I done this murder <laughs> once? <laughs> it's nice that we're getting to that point. I mean, like, it's yeah. exciting that this has gone on long enough I that mean, we're in this area. Yeah, I mean, until we play our last game of Guess Who, this, <laughs> this is going to go on for a long fucking time and we're not going to remember shit. this shit. We're going to be little old ladies being like, did I ever do Theodore Bundy? Now, Steven, I am interested in Theodore Bundy. <laughs> what about him? him? Um, Great. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Mine is a murderous family, too. Is it? Kind of. It's a couple. Yeah. All right. Like a month or two ago, someone on one of the platforms said, you guys should watch this movie called Hounds of Love. Okay. And I'd never heard of it. It's an Australian movie, like a thriller. And I was like, I was alone. Vince was out. I was like, I'm just going to fucking watch it. Put, put it on, you can get it on Amazon. And then I, my mind was fucking blown. Shit. It is the most, it's, okay, here, let's, let's do this. <laughs> it is loosely, they say loosely, but it is very, very not loosely based on this crime. Okay. On this murderous couple from Australia. And I wanted to do this couple when we were in Australia, but I ended up not doing them. So when I watched this movie, I kind of knew some of the details. Oh, okay. And the movie is incredible because the acting is so fucking good. But I swear to God, if you're, if you are faint of heart, you're not going to like this movie. Vince would have fucking hate. If you're not into true crime, hardcore, you're not going to like this movie. Cause it's so upsetting. It's upsetting and so realistic. And, oh. but it was, it's like one of the, fa- my favorite movies I've watched because <laughs> it's so good. Okay. Like Vince would have been like, this is troubling. I can't watch this. And I'd be like, yeah, me too. It's very troubling. <laughs> but really, I would have been like, I can't wait to watch. It's so good. Okay. Okay. So, it is very troubling. Yeah. Oh, I'm really disturbed by this. <laughs> this is wrong. This is wrong. <laughs> and then he goes to bed and I like put it on. Um, so that movie's called Hounds of Love. Watch it after I tell you about this. Okay. Uh, about what it is based on, even though the director said it's not, or the writer said it's not, the Morehouse murders. Okay. Everyone in Perth, Australia is like, fuck yes right now. Nice. Okay. Perth. Perth. Sorry we didn't come there. Perth, again, our apologies. All the pro- we'll, be, we'll be there one day. Someday. Someday. Okay, let's start on November 10th, 1986. So this takes place in the 80s. 86. A fucking crazy, hysterical, barely dressed 17-year-old girl in this suburb of Perth runs into a vacuum cleaner shop 
and begs the shop owner to call the police that she had just been raped and she had been kidnapped and had just escaped. Whoa. When police got there, she said she'd been abducted at knife point by a couple who had taken their, her back to their house and raped her and held her captive. The police are fucking like bullshit skeptical at her. Mm-hmm. They pass her off to one of their most inexperienced police members. So it's Constable Laura Hancock's first day on the job. No! <laughs> no! She's 22 years old. Oh, no! This is her first statement she's ever taken. <gasps> Holy shit. They take this seven, hyster- not hysterical, they take this 17 year old girl to her who has a story and they say to her, hey, uh, this, you need to take notes on this to write her up for lying, for making up a story. <gasps> like they don't believe it at all. And they're like, here you go, Constable fucking Laura Hancock. Do some paperwork. Do some paperwork. Get Oof. this chick off of, out of here. Ugh. Um, so, Miss Laura Hancock, of course, or Constable Laura Hancock, of course, is a female and has empathy. So she's like, hang on a minute. There's a lot of details about this. that, And she is too. And, and, and she's telling it to emotion, not emotionally, but like emphatically that this isn't fake. Yeah. She describes getting a lift from a couple while walking home the night before. Um, they put the knife to her and they chain her in their home in uh, on Morehouse Street. And um that she had escaped in the morning by breaking through a window and running. And Fuck. this ends the four week killing spree at the hands of a couple that left four other women dead. Oh my God. Okay. So let's go. Let's talk about the fucking motherfucking shitty ass couple. These assholes. David Burney. It's the Burneys. David Burney is born February 16th, 1951. He's the eldest of five children. Super dysfunctional family. The parent, his parents go to ask the priest for permission to get married. And the priest is like, I don't think that this can lead to anything good. His parents say that about his parents getting married. Oh, my God. Yeah. Grow, grows up in a suburb of Perth. There's rumors that the family, the mom's super promiscuous. There's alcoholism. There's incest going on. The house, the house is filthy. The kids have no supervision. The mother has a mental age of 14. Oh, no. Really fucked up family life. Um, don't don't feel bad for him. He's okay. a murderer. Okay. okay. That's right. Catherine Harrison, she's also born in 1951. She's two years old when her mother, Doreen, dies giving birth to her brother. Brother also dies, the baby. Father can't cope, so he sends her to live with her mater- maternal grandparents. Um, at 10, she gets sent back to her father. Um, it's just a really... the whole, Her whole childhood is fucked up yeah just ba- basically adults letting her know that she's kind of not welcome anywhere not welcome not wanted her mom is dead Ugh. so both of these people you know normally i would be much more sympathetic to these poor children being raised in this awful way of course i would but i've been studying what they've done for you know a while now and yeah. you just can't yeah you can't you can't okay by 14 David and Catherine are in a relationship. They lived in the same town. They started doing petty crimes together, and Catherine eventually gets caught and sent to, pr- sent to prison, and she breaks free from David, who was, by all accounts, really controlling. And so they had had this tumultuous relationship. But by her 21st birthday, she's married to the son of the family she's a housekeeper for. Um, I bet they loved that. I know, right? That family. <laughs> yeah, I think they were a well-to-do family and- yeah. That's like the plot of 1000 Downton Abbey. So yeah. like, what? You're marrying the maid? Exactly. Um, by the time David's an adolescent, he'd been convicted of several crimes. He had uh, attempted rape on an elderly woman and spent time in and out of prison. In his early 20s, he marries his wife and they have a daughter. Catherine has seven children <gasps> with the, the housekeeper dude guy they have seven kids sorry i was gonna say that's that's old school irish catholic right that's a lot of kids the first her first son though as a baby is struck and killed by a car in front of her no yeah in their like driveway no so she if she's already fucking crazy she's got to be out of her mind by that point i mean hell yes um so in 1985 she Catherine abandons her husband and six children and goes to live with david They get back together at this point. I mean, I have to say, when you were talking about being 14 and doing crimes together, I got a little like, oh, Mm -hmm. like there is something to that that I can see would be really bonding and very exciting. Well, what's really crazy about this, and there's so many aspects of it that don't make sense 
when you look at serial killers. And one of them is like, if these two people hadn't been together, would these things have happened? Yes. And I think, and so they kind of, it's like they were made for each other because they were both fucking awful. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. And yeah. Yeah. It's like when you meet someone and you both hate the same people. Yeah. Only like times a thousand. <laughs> And I'm then you kill those that. people. Yes. And then, <laughs> then you make a list. You write it down. Uh-huh. You both agree. Yeah. Oh. All right. Okay. Bop, 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 bop. So Catherine and David, they're in, they're adults now. They get back together. They move in together. They're like, we're, we're, it's you and me. We're Bonnie yes. and Clyde, all that bullshit. Do you have any idea where they re-met? Like it was just did they pass in the grocery store? Yeah, you gotta wonder. I, I want to know really. Bad. I know that I, I couldn't find that anywhere. Was there some kind of a dating video dating service in well, their he, town? He was his first wife. He was cheating on her constantly, and he even put an ad in the paper saying "bored husband looking for sex" <laughs> no! because he was a crazy sex addict, like kind of um, perverted, and you know was just needing to bone all the fucking time. Yeah. The the marriage broke up when he had their 16-year-old babysitter move into the house to sleep with him. Dude. And his wife was like, get the fuck out of here. His wife's like, you know what? Yeah. This plus mm-hmm. all that laundry I have to do. <laughs> I'm done. Goodbye. The romance is gone. Right. Shit. So... These are some fucked up characters to begin with. So Catherine moves in with David. She changes her last name to Bernie, even though uh, they didn't get married. They moved into a house in Willoughby Mm. in Perth Southwest on a street called Morehouse. So that's why it's the Morehouse murders. Um, For more than a year after getting together, David and Catherine. Okay, David looks like, you know, the uh, Julia, Julia Louise Dreyfus's husband in Veep. The tall, skinny guy with the tall, long nose. I do. What's his name? The actor? Mm-hmm. Dave Pasquazi. I, how, what, how do you? Because I, I know him in real life. Do you? Yes. I was in a pilot with him long, long ago. <gasps> you know every famous person. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> if you hang around this dumb town long enough, you meet everyone. <laughs> he looks exactly like him. Uh, <laughs> He, Perfect. They, it is so uncanny. <laughs> I want to show you a photo right yes, now. Yes, I have to see one. Okay. And that's then, awesome. so that's what he looks like. And she, and Catherine looks like if Juliet, Lu, Juliet Lewis was normal. Oh, God. For it, a second, I was going to be like, is this some kind of a veep review? <laughs> Juliet Lewis. Okay. Juliet Lewis, the actress and musician, if she were a basic bitch, like Got a it. normal looking, like 80s. <laughs> You know, beige wearing person. Yes. Like bad shirts. Yeah. Okay. That's what she would look like. Exciting. And the actors in the movie Hounds of Love look exactly like them. Here's Karen. Steven's showing Karen a photo right now. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. But I have to say, oh my God. The, that's so funny. Which part? The, well, first of all, the Juliette Lewis woman is is looks like she's. A pretty hot, leaded, hard scrabble life. Like, yeah, it does me- not like a moisturize. No. But ha- did you ever see District Nine? Yeah. The actor or Chappie or any of those yeah, that yeah, yeah. South, um, uh, <laughs> South African. Chateau Copley. Is that his name? Yeah. yeah. Jesus, Steve. you too. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. We're gonna go to a trivia night. <laughs> I think that guy looks like him. Yeah, like, I, can, I can see that for sure. It's that. Uh, it's just this like long, prominent nose, yeah. this like jaw line, th- really thin, wiry. Like me- he was a mechanic, so he looks has a mechanic, sinewy body. Yep, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Oh my god! But also, this guy's eye, David Bernie's yeah, eyes, dead, frightening. Yeah, hers They're, too. If you yeah. see her, it, like they both are clear, clear sociopaths, and you'll find out more so when I tell you what they did. Okay. All right. That was fun. All right. So, Hollywood Corner. <laughs> Hollywood Corner. So they get back together and they start 
fucking feeding their crazy sexual fantasies that they have about rape and murder that the two of them both have and they start reading books about how to commit the perfect murder what they could do they even call up um they call around town to find out where they could leave a car of one of their if they find a victim and have to like abandon a car where can they leave it the longest without being detected and it turns out it's actually at the fucking police station what which they end up doing with this their first victim what okay on October 6, 1986, 22-year-old Mary Nielsen, she's studying um, psychology at a university. She goes to the uh, Bernie's house because she had needed to buy tires, went to the mechanic place where David Bernie worked, and he was like, oh, you know, actually, I have some tires I can sell you for on the cheap. They're just at my house. You just need to come there. And no. she's like, great. She's never. a student. She's trying to save money. No. No, never. Yes. Tires belong in a tire shop. Yeah. Yes. In a stack. Yeah. In front of the tire shop. You sit in the air conditioned fucking office and it smells like rubber. Sm- and, you, and you read of an old highlights magazine. That's right. While you, you wait. You just wait. And you wait. And they get everything gets done on the premises. Yeah. The end. The end. Uh, so she goes to the house to get the tires. He immediately gags her, chains her to the bed, and rapes her while Catherine watches and takes notes. What? Yeah. So Catherine is in on this completely. Yeah. She's taken to uh, Glen Eagles National Park, which was their dumping ground. And as she begs for her life, she's raped and strangled with a nylon cord. And he, when she's dead, he stabs her knowing it would speed up decomposition because they had read about it in the murder books. Fuck. Yeah. So they're just animals. They're monsters. Yeah. And they were planning on planning this they're organized monsters they're organized monsters this this first mary nielsen their first victim kind of just happened um by circumstance but as we'll see that's not what happened next yeah (laughs) um so it was just an act of opportunity and they just wanted to get away with the perfect murder so um so their their actual plan though is that the sun sets and they go hunting for victims in the car they scope out the streets any woman who was alone they would offer a ride and it's a fucking nice looking young couple who's like hi do you need a ride you know it's that that thing and they, they do it so perfectly in the movie hounds of love that you it, it it's the movie is so realistic it's creepy yeah so sorry what year is that movie from is it recent yeah, yeah it's in the past year or two. Oh, okay yeah um i think so, but it looks like the 80s. It's like, it's such a good movie. Okay. But, 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 but. All right. So they would, they would, uh, two weeks later, they were cruising, looking for a, their next victim. They spot 15 year old high school student, Susanna Candy, as she's hitchhiking along, um, Sterling Highway in Claremont. So within seconds of getting into the car with this nice couple, and in the movie, they even had a baby seat in the back seat, which oh. is like, I don't know if that's really what happened, but uh, she there's a knife to her throat and her hands are bound. She's taken back to the house. She's gagged, chained to the bed, and raped. They force Then they force uh, Susanna to send letters to her family, assuring them that she's all right. But of course, the family doesn't believe it and fears for her life. Yeah. After they finish raping Susanna, Catherine Bernie uh, gets into bed with them and they rape her together. He tries to strangle her with a nylon cord, but she becomes hysterical. This is really fucked up, by the way. I should have started with that. No, no, no. I I mean, but I think it's that it is that thing of a, a complicit wife to a serial killer or to a serial rapist is so beyond the pale. It's yeah. just so odd and so hard to comprehend in any way. And yeah. the only way I was able to even wrap my mind around what, how and what was this movie. Right. So I think I, I didn't think I was planning on doing this, the murder, even though I had read about it until I saw this movie and it, it was, yeah, it just made sense in a way that was so troubling. Yeah. Yeah. And it also is the thing of like so many times I've wanted to do the girl in the box, the story right. of the woman who is, and she was also kidnapped by a husband yeah. and wife whose, uh, the wife was, you know, obviously abused and, and like, yeah. it was not the same situation, but and everything. Well, that's what's so interesting about this one is I don't think that that's the case at all. And of course they try to make it seem that way later, 
but that's not these two people were equally uh complicit yeah because that's not who she was really right but it's just the idea of you these assumptions that that we've all made culturally a man by himself is dangerous Mm -hmm. a man and a woman are fine Mm -hmm. a baby seat clears the decks Mm -hmm. like all those things that are just like no 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 Mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay totally um so they force sleeping pills they force her to take sleeping pills and once she's asleep david puts a cord around her neck and tells Catherine to prove her undying love for him by strangling her yeah that's how you do it yeah yeah which she does wow i know um they bury her near the grave of mary nielsen in in the forest as well um on november 1st 31 year old um nolene patterson had run out of gas on her way home from her job as a bar manager at a golf club she's standing by the side of the road when they drive up the bernies drive up she gets inside the car and so here's a creepy fucking thing they had a code for when a girl got in the car if they thought she was a good um victim Catherine was the one who decided if she was a good victim or not if she was okay with you know because it was if she was okay bringing this one home yeah it was almost like you can cheat on me if i choose the person it's almost like she thought of it as cheating on her i know so she would say to david i've got the munchies and david would say yeah i've got the munchies too that was their code word yeah and so they held a knife to her throat and tied her up and told her not to move she's taken back to morehouse street david repeatedly rapes her um they had originally decided to murder her that same night which was kind of what they did but david kept her prisoner in the house for three days because there were signs that he had developed an emotional attachment to her because she was this really fucking smart you know 31 year old woman who was like gonna play them against each other and make david fall for her yeah that's how she was going to escape that was her plan um but unfortunately Catherine got super fucking jealous held a knife to her throat and made gave an ultimatum that david has to kill her or she's going to kill herself that Catherine's going to kill herself Catherine's going to kill herself if david didn't kill um nolene whoa i bet that was an unpleasant scene to watch in that movie it's insane it's fucking insane okay um so he forces her to t- Deline to take a overdose of sleeping pills uh, and strangles her while she's asleep. They take her body to the forest and bury it, but they bury it away from the other victims because he had some emotional attachment to her. Yeah, that's insane. fucking weird. I know. All right. Then on November 5th, they abduct 21 year old Denise Brown as she's waiting for a bus on Sterling Highway. Um, she accepts a ride and at knife point she's taken to the house chained to the bed again and raped um they take her into the forest david assaults her again and they stab her in the neck they go to bury her in a shallow grave but she's not dead and denise sits up in the grave what the fuck oh my god hold on a second. i know I'm doing my nervous laughing. <laughs> I'm doing my nervous reading because like suddenly I'm re- I'm realizing how f- I mean I'm not realizing but you know you're in this thing and you're like this no, is No, it's so the disturbing. fucking this is like living hell. But also when we were in Australia, this I didn't know it from the Morehouse murders, but oh, so many people from Perth were like my mom was so it's David Bernie's boss or there was all these people that had they would just mention the Bernie's like my sister went to the school that blew up remember that yeah. it was constantly being referenced yeah I didn't know what anyone was talking about yeah, but I I'd be remember. like that's crazy <laughs> but I, we just knew it was like there was a good murder and we yeah. just didn't know about it and I had read about it a little bit but but I had so many details wrong and I remember picturing in my head of what it looked like and what happened and it's so wrong from what really was going on yes um, but that detail is if it were in a movie I know. you'd be like this is you're going crazy yeah. like let's not be let's not turn it into like full horror movie yeah but that's exactly what this is and then yes what happened they killed her they grab an axe oh, and, and cut her head off no and just hit her in the head with the oh. axe to oh. kill her um but they say that this is kind of where Catherine broke a little bit the brutality of this part is i mean fucking stabbing someone like that's not bad enough but um so this this is is just like yeah it would it would cut through 
the reality. It's just a next level yeah. insanity. Yeah. Okay. So no more people dying. Okay. Okay. All right. Now. Agreed. Okay. <laughs> let's go. Let's. Now we do our cooking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a clean transition into recipes. Stir the congealed blood <laughs> no. into the. Into the cellar. Oatmeal. Yeah. Into the cellar. <laughs> okay. So let's get to fucking Kate um, Moyer. She's a badass. She's a 17 year old free spirit. She drops out of high school. She's a model. She's just gorgeous. There's all these videos. Oh, there's this really great. Um, true crime show called Murder Uncovered and episode one is about her. So there's all these videos. She is the one from the beginning of the story that escaped. Okay. All awesome. right. Good. So she's this fucking cool as shit, badass woman. Um, on November 10th, 1986, she accepts a ride around the corner from her house after a night of drinking with friends. But she's this nice couple picks her up and she's like, yeah, give me a ride the rest of the way home. Yeah. They get to her house. She goes to open the door. There's no door handle. <sighs> that thing Mm. but they take her to the house and they say oh you need to roll down the window and or use the door handle whatever and she goes to do that one and there's no door handle like they were fucking toying with her and oh my god at that point he pulls out a fucking knife and holds it to her neck and they drive away and they tie her up um they take her to their house and they hang out with her in the living room and smoke a joint with her and talk to her and ask her all these questions. They play music and they make her strip and dance to, okay, ready to never hear the song again the same way. And it's been in my fucking head since I found out what song it was. Wait, can I guess? Yes. Will you tell me? It's 86. Thank you. Beds are burning by, (laughs) I'm trying to think of Australian bands. Okay. Is it, you know, how do we sleep? It's a good guess, but no, it's, it's, it's in that. Men at work? No. I don't know if they're Australian. Actually. Okay. They probably Is, are. Rock set? No. <laughs> What's that rock set song? Yeah. That one? No. Okay. Want me to sing it for you? Yes. Um, I don't think I should. Do it. I'm going to say it to you and you'll sing it. Okay. It's Romeo and Juliet by Dire Straits. Oh, no. Wait a second. S- do it, sing a little. Uh, Juliet, da da da, vanish from the start. No, that's not right. Um, <laughs> hold on, Steven, hold on. I'm gonna play it. Can I play it? Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think we can either. You don't know it? Let me play it for you. <laughs> We're gonna pause. I just need a tiny bit more. I don't know anymore, and I'm embarrassed of my voice. Okay, I'm gonna play it for you. We're gonna pause. So yeah, that was the song, and Ugh. I've just been I've had it stuck in my head <laughs> the past couple weeks, and it's been real troubling. It's also so creepy because like those lyrics where it's like, "Hey, let's give it a try." It's and a all love this song. Kind of, it's very romantic, quote unquote. It's it's. So creepy. There's something about that that is just so eerie to me. These people were fucking nuts. These people were fucking nuts. Nutcases. Nutcases. Um, all right. Da, 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 da. They, so they like smoke weed with her and hang out with her. And she says to them, are you guys going to kill me? And they said, we'll just rape you if you're good. If you're just if you're good, we'll just rape you. Jesus. Which, of course, wasn't fucking true. Um, so David holds a knife to her throat and forces her to call her mom she says and assure her mom that she had too much to drink and was staying at a friend's house yeah can you imagine like on the phone with your mom being like i've said this to you before but things like that make me go we have to set up a code word where if you hear me say this word in a conversation like that something else is going on i actually made this plan with my friend holly gardner when we were 13 years old oh my god what was it and it was like i can't remember why something had happened where it was like either home invasion had been in the news or some kind of thing and i was like we were it was some stupid thing where like we have to make up a code if we ever say this it was some kind of like school books it was something about homework or books or something but it was like in the movie the girl has to write a letter and there's a code in it that she puts in there (gasps) really and yeah it's fucking cool um so was it a pre-agreed code or she just put it in hoping that they would find out she put it in hoping that they would find out i'm i like the idea of a pre-agreed okay what about Stay sexy, don't get murdered. If we ever say that to each other. <laughs> Steven's kidnapped us and made us make a podcast for You'd be like 90 I, episodes. I know that you're trying to get me to call my family as a cover for your murder of me. Right. But real quick, do you mind if I talk about a podcast with my family member? <laughs> it's what we always do. Okay. If we ever say, um, I don't know. Use the word suburbanites. Okay. 
If the word suburbanites comes out of any of our mouths, I would never say that word normally. Okay. We'd never say that word. Suburbanites. If suburbanites comes into the picture, it's code red. Okay. Something bad's happening. Hey, I'm at the suburbanites house and like that. I'm I'm trying, I'm (laughs) practicing. (laughs) Then we have to figure out a way to fit fit that word in. Hey, I got drunk. I'm staying at my suburbanite friend's house. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. (laughs) That really stands out. It doesn't work. Um, what if we say, if we ever say ciao instead of bye? Shit. So you save it up till the very end. Oh shit. Yeah. No, but I mean, that's fine. Or what about hola? If we say hola when we're like (laughs) saying hello, hola, Karen, I'm just going to stay the night at my friend's house. Yep. Hola. Que tal? (laughs) Okay. Done. We'll figure this out. Yeah. Let's all just have a code word though. Okay. Um, dire straits. Blah blah blah. <laughs> That's right. So I'm going up. to a Dire Straits concert. Right. And I'm I am in Dire Straits. And I am I'm seriously in Dire Straits. Yeah. Uh da, 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 da. Okay. Then uh she's forced to dance with them. Then she's forced to sleep in the couple's bed while handcuffed to David. Um so they rape her. Uh Catherine joins in. She uh starts screaming at one point and they come in and they say the sleeping arrangements have changed and they bring her into their bed together. They handcuff her ankle to David's. He tries to make her take sleeping pills. She hides them in her mouth and then tucks them into the mattress Ooh, while they're sleeping. Cause nice. she's like, I know that if I fall asleep here, I'm going to die. Yeah. She was on fucking point and she said so this an interview this is like her first interview ever um and she seems so normal it's scary like she seems amazing uh she says she knew she had like a 200 to 1 chance of surviving but she was going to do whatever she could to make it happen hell yes that's that's the that's the mental place you need to be in she was there and you know what she kept she started fucking doing she was like no one's going to believe me that i was in this house they're going to they she watched them take her clothes and bag them up so that they wouldn't leave anything behind when they got rid of the evidence she knew that's what they were doing in her mind so she said i'm gonna leave evidence here so people someone knows i was here yeah. so she starts fucking hiding shit in the house she makes little drawings and hides them in the mattress she takes the pills and hides them there she puts a lipstick in this like weird spot just to prove that she was there and yes. like her name and everything on a little piece of paper um brilliant yeah i lost my thing but hold on okay where was i Hold on. Sorry. Insert page numbers. I'm telling you. I did. You, I did. Miracle. And now I don't remember what page I was on. <laughs> and I don't know where I put them. <laughs> All right. So the day after she was kidnapped, the next day, David leaves for work. And Catherine goes to the door because the, someone comes to the door for a drug dealer, for a drug deal. And they think, so Catherine forgets to chain Kate up she just pushes her in the room and says stay in this room and they think that maybe in her mind was so fucked up from the last murder that she just wasn't thinking straight or or wasn't on her game yeah and Kate realizes this is a fucking chance to escape so she finds a window she breaks the lock on it pushes out the window jumps out of the window hits her head on the concrete on the way down and starts fucking booking it down the street yeah knocking on doors no one's answering she jumps a fence and a fucking dog attacks her in someone's yard no gets the fuck out keeps running sees her like a vacuum cleaner store with a man in a suit out front and runs to him and um she says i was hysterical i'm barefoot wearing my black leggings a a black singlet and knickers she says to him help i've been raped please take me inside and call the police and she's afraid that uh catherine's gonna come after her so she says if a woman comes here and says i had a fight with her and i'm her daughter don't believe her i've been raped shit and so she's brought to the police station and she's handed off to our friend constable laura hancock our 22 year old friend who's Age never taken 22. never taken a statement before and handed off to her because they don't believe her Oh. Um, they tell her to write up, a f- write her up for making a false report. But Laura's hearing her story, hearing these crazy details, including how sh- like the shine and the numbers on the fucking chains that she was locked up in, what color robe David was wearing, what color robe she had to wear, all these details. And she keeps going up to her outside to her like her captain and being like, I don't think she's lying. She's telling me this and this and this. And they're like, she's lying. Go back in, get more information. Finally, Kate says, 
Um, the couple had been using pseudonyms the whole time, but she had seen their names on the medicine bottle and the name was David Bernie. Oh, and shit. then they believed her because he had a crazy fucking record. Yes. So then they were like, oh, shit. So uh, she um, police go to the house and uh, in they find the stuff Kate stashed proving she was there mm. and the the movie they made her watch when they had been smoking pot it was in the vcr it was fucking rambo and the dire straits cassette in the stereo Ew, so, so like all the details Ugh. is there uh and they find her hidden trinkets as well um so david and Catherine are arrested and interrogated and just the detectives were about to give up on him you know, it was going to be a he said, she said bullshit thing. Detective Sergeant Vince um, Kadich says, look, it's getting dark. Just tell us where they're buried. And David says, OK. And he takes them to where the graves are. So like as a holy Mary, he yeah, says that. Just like, tell it's getting dark. Just tell us. Oh, and my David God. Agrees. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, later, when Catherine's asked, OK, let's see. All right. Da, 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 da. All right. So they are both sentenced to four terms of life imprisonment. They're required to serve 20 years before being um, eligible for parole. When asked why she had done it, Catherine said, because I wanted to see how strong I was within my inner self. I didn't feel a thing. It was like I expected. I was prepared to follow him to the end of the earth and do anything to see that his desires were satisfied. She was a female. Females hurt and destroy males. That's why she did it. Killed. Oh, right. oh, like on behalf of males, she was killing females. Mm -hmm. She didn't feel anything like all females were fucked up. So after 19 years in prison, David Bernie is found dead in his cell on October 7th, 2005. He hanged himself from an air vent using a length of cord. Do you think he hanged himself? Yeah. I think he was really depressed and he hanged himself. Huh. Yeah. And then um, he was 55 years old after her fourth bid for parole was declined in 2016. Uh, her, Sorry, wait. Catherine's fourth bid for parole declined in 2016, just last year. And our friend, badass Kate over here, uh, is has a campaign to end Western Australians laws that automatically put convicts up for parole every three years because she's not even asking for parole. They just keep putting her up. Right. That's just, it's like, it's like a computer's doing it right. basically. So there's speculation, of course, that the Bernies were responsible for a uh, couple other disappearances, including Sharon Renwick in May, 1986 and Barbara Western in June, 1986. And based on what, the evidence they talk about in the documentary, I absolutely think that they were responsible for those two disappearances. And then there's also um, the disappearance of Lisa Mott in 1980. And it looks like that was David's doing for sure. I mean, there's just no way it yeah. wasn't. So that's the, uh, the Morehouse murders. Holy shit, dude. I, I went dark. That was crazy. They're all horrible. But I, I mean, that was like, like, it's so funny. Fuck? It makes so much sense now why so many people brought up the Bern <laughs> the Bernies to us. Because it was a normal suburb and it was a normal couple that everyone thought was just, you know. And you look it deep into it and there's so many fucked up points to it. There's so many creepy details and, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. It's, it's God. so fucked up. And you can't judge a book by the baby seat in the back seat. Yeah, ever. exactly. Oh, it's just this thing of not understanding how, how you can't understand how one person would do it to begin with. Ted Bundy, I can't understand how anyone would do what he did. And then you see these two people and it's almost more manipulative and more sinister. And it's... Yeah, that's well, it like doubles everything because then it's just like, how did you get another individual to yeah. be as fucked up as you and to go into this with you? And then what does that mean about your relationship? And yeah, it's all it's all that it's just, and just so beyond beyond. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's so weird not being in a live show, isn't it? 
What's that? It's so weird not being at a live show, isn't it? <laughs> Where's our applause? Stephen, <laughs> clap for us. <laughs> how do we know when it Steven, ends? Stephen, how dare you? If there's not applause. <laughs> we don't know. We're just petting a cat. I don't know when this is over. Yeah. Oh, now we're all bummed out. Uh, no, now we have to do one positive thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. What's yours? Okay, so mine is... Um, I am so obsessed with it. It's our new, like everyone now needs to go watch it because that we're all in a fucking low place because of that story. So now it's like the Bob's Burger thing. Yes. Now go turn on, go to Netflix and turn on Big Mouth. It's, <gasps> it's Nick Kroll and John Mulaney's new cartoon coming of age, but fucking dark and hilarious. It is so fucking good. I want to cry. Vince and I were watching it and we're just amazed the whole time. Oh, that's great. It's so good. That's great. Yeah. I definitely have that pause when people that I know and love and Mm -hmm. admire have something come out. I have, I do like a three month pause on it and I just wait to hear what people say because I get nervous. I'm afraid if people's thing is bad, Yeah. then if it is, or I hear it might be that I just go, I just pretend it never existed. Right. And I don't have to like have an opinion one way or the I other. I completely understand. I vetted it for you. It <laughs> Thank is you. so sweet and so good and so wonderful. I believe it. Because Nick Kroll is truly one of the funniest Nick, people. Nick Kroll is so funny. And then she's proved to me like he can't do anything fucking wrong. No, he like, just knows what he's doing. He is so good. This show is darling. It's so it's a darling while also being like weirdly dark and funny. It's just great. That's great. Yeah, watch it. I watched a movie on the flight home from Florida, which mm-hmm. was kind of a beast. It was like a six hour flight yeah. that we took. So I was like, when I do that, I'm always like, okay, that means three movies. Yeah. I can do three movies. I do it at fucking every day. <laughs> I lay on the couch and watch nine movies. And you don't even have dogs bothering you the whole time. <laughs> too. Know. A little peace and quiet. Yeah. Maybe Great. some from fun strangers that are going to get into an argument. Snacks. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, snacks. You know, my new thing these days is, and I don't know why, this is how insane I am. When they come around and offer snacks on flights, I'm always like, no, thank you. <laughs> I'll, I will eat the worst shit in the yeah. world. Oh, privately. you just don't want them to know that you're. I, I just try to pretend like mm. I'm some kind of an island. Like, <laughs> drink? No, thank you. No, thank I, you. I need nothing. I do bought water. Right. Do you want some pretzels? No. I'm not reliant on your snacks I and don't. beverages. I do not need you. I am self-sufficient in my movie. <laughs> so crazy. But that wasn't, that's not my thing. Okay. <laughs> I want it to be. That's not my good point. It's my independence from plain snacks. That's it. That makes me happy. I will say this, not to do a commercial for JetBlue in any way. We neither here nor there about them, except... That weird thing they had where they had a little... They trust you to get your own snacks. You can walk up to where the bathroom is and across from the bathroom, there is a refrigerator with every drink in it and then a like a weird cupboard with a ton of snacks in it. It's like you're an adult and you can fucking police yourself and you're not going to jam a bunch of Cheez-It bags into your purse. Because everyone can see you right it's brilliantly placed so it's like when i went to get i was like oh i want to see what they have but then i noticed that you would have to open the door to mm-hmm. look and see what the snacks were well i ate cookies so, <laughs> did you yeah were they good yeah no they're fine uh is that what makes you happy i brought a ginger ale no um i brought it back to my seat and then i watched this movie that my friend had told me was good my friend molly told me was good already but it's the jeremy renner Elizabeth Mary K- L. Olson mm-hmm. movie called Wind River and it's about a murder that takes place on a Native American reservation Oh, and it is so well done and it is a female writer director mm. and it should be getting way more press and I've way more attention it, yeah. um, I think it did really good at festivals and that's how like it yeah. like popped in the first place and why it's like on a jet blue yeah. it's really interesting Elizabeth Olsen is one of the greater actors of her generation. Did you ever see Martha Marcy May Marlene, that movie? If you haven't seen that movie, you got it. It's about a girl that just left a cult. Oh, I'm missing out. It's great. That's from like probably four or five years ago, maybe. But this one, Wind River, is this incredible... It's a, it's a murder mystery thing, Dude. but then really it kind of unfolds into this thing. And at the end, it does one of those like true facts go up onto the screen. And 
Native American women go missing on reservations constantly, and there are no reports about it. Oh my god! Ever anywhere ever? Yeah. No one looks into it. No one makes. No one investigates it. And so, whatever happens on this land, whoever's there and whatever they do, young women go missing or women go missing, and they just don't. No one does anything about it. Yeah. And it's it was very upsetting. Like the story itself is good and very emotional. It's really well told and mm-hmm. well written. But then that factoid at the end that's yeah. like this is kind of why we made this movie is so upsetting. It's a thing we kind of know. We yeah. know in general, yeah. but to know that specifically about like indigenous people yeah. of America yeah. is insanely fucked up. And I just, I encourage everybody to kind of take it all in and, and go look into it. Okay. And cause that woman is really, really talented who okay. put all that whole thing together. And then watch Big Mouth. So you stop crying. Exactly. Like <laughs> take that in, yeah. get, get the full weight once again of underrepresented people, right. the marginalized people. Right. And then big mouth, big mouth at the end of it. Watch big mouth for some. I just know that there's tons of like in that on that show. Yeah. There's tons of stuff about him, like because it's basically him in puberty. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's so funny. good. Fucking um, Maya Rudolph, her character. I can't. It, I can't give it away. It's okay. a hormone monster. It's so fucking good. <laughs> I want to cry. It's so good. Oh, I can't wait to watch it. Everything about it is beautiful. Okay. I love um, it. Thanks for listening, you guys. Guys, thanks for being here with us once again. Once again, and we appreciate it, and you guys are the best. Um, thank you for everything. Thank you. And just from us to you, stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Bye. Bye. Elvis. Elvis. Wait, Dottie? Elvis, show her how. Elvis, want a cookie? Elvis, want a cookie? Dottie? Want a cookie?